So I suppose the first question is um, one would ask as well, is there a substrate by which COVID-19 affects the brain that presents with movement disorders? You know, is, are there possible mechanisms which could present with movement disorders? And the answer is yes. And if we look at the, the underlying mechanisms of the neurological diseases we're seeing with COVID, the first is stroke, as I've indicated. So certainly strokes in certain parts of the basal ganglia could present with movement disorders. Uh, if you've had multiple strokes, lots of small vessel strokes, that can present with Parkinsonism. We know that uh, Parkinson can be due to small vessel disease. So that's one category of possible mechanism. The second, as I've indicated to you, is this inflammatory process, which can again uh, affect parts of the brain, which may give you uh, myoclonus, may give you movement disorders, depending on which part of the brain is affected. Uh, the third possibility, and again, this is uh, more theoretical than proven at the moment, is that certainly after certain virus infections, such as herpes simplex and encephalitis, one third of patients may go on to develop an autoimmune-mediated encephalitis, such as with NMDA antibodies, and these patients present with their own types of movement disorders. Um, the other question, big question is, does the virus itself cause damage to the brain? And could that be a cause of movement disorders? And we've, we've got a precedent for this in, for example, Japanese B encephalitis or West Nile virus, or even the HIV virus, which in itself was affecting the basal ganglia. Um, these studies today, do not suggest that there is viral damage. And the evidence for this is that the CSF examinations, I think one or two cases have shown evidence of the virus in the spinal fluid. There was one um, post-mortem study from Germany where they looked at 34 patients. Uh, the first author was Maschel. And they found evidence of SARS-CoV-2 in about 53%. And the virus seemed to be around the brain stem and lower cranial nerves. But there was a disconnect between where they found traces of the virus and where the inflammatory changes were taking place. They were not in the same place. And the question was, you know, is the virus actually doing anything there? So the, the, the jury is out on as to whether the virus enters the brain and causes damage. But the evidence to date is not strong. Um, and so those are sort of mechanisms. So there are possible mechanisms of how movement disorders can be presented in COVID-19. So far, all the literature is very anecdotal. Um, there is one paper in the journal Tremor by Francesco Cardozo, um, who looked at a review of all the case reports in the literature, and the conclusion of his group was that movement disorders are relatively rare in COVID-19. The most common movement disorder that was described was myoclonus. Uh, and and we, we've certainly described that as well in some of our papers. Um, it was usually in the context of an encephalopathy. So these are patients who were quite severely ill, maybe with um, uh, low levels of oxygen or infections. Uh, but so myoclonus is the most commonly uh, described movement disorder to date. There are a few case reports of Parkinsonism in COVID-19, and that's caused a lot of interest, a lot of debate, a lot of editorials in various journals about, is this going to be something we're going to see more of? The few cases so far have been not typical for Parkinson's disease. They've been relatively acute onset. Although they've had positive DAT scans, which implies there is striatonigral uh, dopaminergic cell loss, they haven't really responded much to, to treatment as such. And certainly there's a very interesting uh, editorial by Marcelo Batian Obesio where they discuss the possible mechanisms of what may be going on here. And one possibility is, okay, the virus or somebody with very serious illness gets ill develops Parkinsonism, was it because they had the predisposition already? There was, they had subclinical Parkinson's and the virus infection triggered off Parkinson's, uh, Parkinsonism. Is it that, you know, patients who are very ill develop Parkinsonism due to the whole inflammatory process that's going on? 
And this Parkinson syndrome may be just temporary or it could be long term. And then there's a possibility of whether a virus infection like COVID-19 comes and goes, but then one's left with an ongoing, uh, whether low-grade inflammatory process or viral persistence, and that in 5, 10, 15 years, these patients will develop Parkinsonism or Parkinson's disease. And so the question then comes to whether the whole question of encephalitis lethargica is relevant to the current situation. Um, uh, as you're aware, so after the 1918 flu pandemic, there were cases of encephalitis lethargica, um, which then, you may have seen the film Awakenings uh, with Robin Williams and Robert De Niro, which, which illustrated this whole um, picture. So the jury is out as to what the cause of encephalitis lethargica was, because there were cases reported before the 1918 pandemic. They managed to get brains of patients who died of encephalitis lethargica, um, and they didn't find any evidence of the flu virus in the brains. Uh, and subsequently, various reviews and um, studies have suggested that possibly encephalitis lethargica was a post-infectious immune-mediated process, uh, which then presented uh, a good time later on. So I think the importance of that whole story is that we are going to need to follow up all our patients here, monitoring them for various long-term complications, including Parkinsonism or any other neurodegenerative process, because only time will tell.